Have you ever heard the term overhead hole? I hadn't either until I read this fabulous new book, Unicorns Unite, How Nonprofits and Foundations Can Build Epic Partnerships. And I'm gonna tell you about this book today. Hi, I'm Amy Eisenstein, and I am reviewing this fabulous new book that I picked up. One of the authors is a colleague of mine, Vu Le, and he writes this wonderful um, blog. He just changed the name of it. Nonprofit AF, that's the name. Uh, I was blanking, go, going to the old name of the blog. But anyways, so I'm going to talk about this wonderful book. Now, if you know me, you know that I don't really talk about foundation fundraising, and this book is focused a lot on foundation fundraising. But what I did is I read it with an eye towards um, taking the lessons learned that they talk about with foundations here and applying them to individual donors. Now, one of the lessons that I highlight in the post below is that donors and nonprofits are more united than they are divided. They have the end goal in mind. That's the same, right? That's what they want, is to fulfill the mission of the organization. And so you're probably closer than maybe you think you are when you're starting a conversation. So that's one important takeaway. Another is, of course, ask for what you need. So that doesn't just apply to foundation funders, it absolutely applies to individual donors too. So I highlight those and four other lessons learned that the authors of this book apply to foundation funders that also apply to individual donors. But I started by asking the questions about what is an overhead hole. Um, you can probably infer what it means. There's a fabulous, um, explanation in the book and in the written post below, but one of the things that they're talking about is the need for overhead, unrestricted operating money. And in the book, there is a fabulous exercise to do with your donors to help explain why overhead money is so important and why restricted money is so difficult. And the authors use this wonderful example of a bakery and people coming in to order a cake. And it's a group of people that wanna order a cake together. And of course, as the baker, you know what the ingredients are and what they cost. You need eggs, you need milk, you need flour, you need sugar, you need butter, et cetera. You need chocolate, and they all have costs associated with them. And yet this group of people that comes in to purchase this cake, one of them says, I'm willing to pay for eggs, but not for sugar. None of my money can go for sugar. Another one says, I'm willing to pay for eggs, but not for butter. Absolutely not for butter. A third one comes in, you understand where this is going, and says, I can pay for part of the chocolate and part of the eggs, but nothing else, and on and on. And I know it sounds a little silly, but actually I think it's a really good way of explaining why it is so difficult for nonprofits to function properly with all restricted money. You couldn't possibly operate a bakery that way or bake a cake that way, and you can't run a nonprofit way, that way either. So get that exercise and so many more in this fabulous new book, Unicorns Unite and read the post below to, to see what my takeaways are for individual donors. So that's it for today. I'll talk to you soon.